In the previous video, we learned how to determine the internal forces at a specified location on a member. However, we would rather know where the maximum internal reaction happens in the member because that's where the member is most likely to fail. And in most cases, we cannot easily tell that location. Therefore, we need to know how exactly internal forces vary with different locations. In other words, we want to know the internal forces as functions of location X on the member. You can write the functions for all four types of internal forces following a similar approach. But in this video, we will focus on the shear force function and the bending moment function. And the graphs of these functions are known as the shear force and bending moment diagrams. Let's use this example to demonstrate that. Again, the goal is to write the shear force and bending moment functions of th this beam so we can calculate the shear force and bending moment at any given location. Also, we want to sketch the diagrams so we can easily visualize the variations in the shear force and bending moment and be able to tell where the maximum shear force or bending moment happens. We have already learned the method of sections. Therefore, we will cut the member at an arbitrary location x and apply the method of sections to write the shear force and bending moment as expressions of x. So the first thing we do is to complete the free body diagram of this member by determining all the external support reactions and marking them on the member. You may ask, since when we apply the method of sections, we can choose either side for our analysis, so is it really necessary to solve all support reactions? Can we just solve for the roller support only? That is true. However, there is an advantage of solving all the external forces completely, because this way we can double check our diagrams. Therefore, I would encourage you to always solve for all the external support reactions. Then we want to set up an x-axis to represent the different location along this member. You can set it up whichever way you want, from left to right, from right to left, from the center, or even setting up multiple x-axis, but I always set it up this way, from left to right. And for one particular problem, I always only use one x-axis. On this axis, point A is the origin, x equals to zero, and point B is uh, this point right here when x equals to eight. And any point between A and B can be represented by various x values on this axis. So next thing we want to do is to section the member. Before doing that, let's take a look at the loadings on the member. And you can tell the loadings change. Intuitively, we might be able to tell we cannot use a single shear force function or a single bending moment function to describe the entire member. Since points C and D are where changes happen, for this problem, we are going to cut the members three times. First, section 1 between points A and C. Secondly, section 2 between points C and D. And lastly, section 3 between points D and B. Keep in mind that every time we section the member, we will take the entire left segment for analysis, because this way the length of the segment is x, as defined by the x-axis we set up. So first, we section the member at location 1 and take the entire left segment for analysis. The entire length of this segment is again an arbitrary x. We draw the internal forces according to the sign conventions that we learned before. On this segment, we have a distributed load with intensity of 80 pounds per foot. Therefore, we need to replace it by a concentrated load first. The magnitude of this concentrated force is area of the rectangle, which is 80 times x. And it is placed at a centroid location of this distributed load, which is half of x distance from the section. And now we can apply the rigid body equilibrium to this segment and write the equilibrium equations. Since we are not interested in the normal force, and it is zero anyway, we write two equations, the resultant force along the y direction and the resultant moment about where we cut the member, let's call it point x. This way, the unknown force vx has no moment about this point x and does not show up in the moment equilibrium equation. Since x is not known, we cannot find the definite values for the shear force and bending moment, but we can still solve them as expressions of x. And these are the shear force and bending moment functions of location x for the first part of the member. 
and we do the same thing for section 2. Keep in mind, we are still using the entire left segment for the analysis, therefore the length of the segment is still x. And also be careful when finding the moment arm for the concentrated force. And we can solve for two more functions that apply to the second part of the member. And we do it one more time. Again, the segment has a length of x. Again, be careful with the moment arms. And we can solve for the last set of functions that apply to the third part of the member. And after we summarize the results, we can see that both shear force and bending moment functions are piecewise functions because they are each made up of three different equations that apply to different parts of the member. And if you know the functions, of course, you will be able to graph them. You've probably learned this in pre-calculus class. These are the two graphs I made using Microsoft Excel. And these are the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram. From these two diagrams, you can easily visualize how shear force and bending moment change with location along the member, where they change direction from positive to negative or vice versa, and most importantly, where the absolute maximum shear force and bending moment occur. And those are important information used in the design of a structure. However, this method is quite time consuming and sometimes we want to be able to quickly sketch the diagrams. To do that, we will learn a graphical method as well. Let's look at these two diagrams I made. On the top, we have the shear force diagram, which is made up of three parts or three straight lines. Two of these lines are horizontal, but the first one, let's look at its slope. It decreases from v equals to 300 pounds at x equals to 0 to v equals to negative 20 pounds at x equals to 4 feet. So the slope is negative 80 pounds per foot. And if you recall, for the first 4 feet on the member, there is a distributed load with load intensity w that is also negative 80 pounds per foot. It is negative because, as you can see, the force is pointing downwards. Well, we know that load intensity is defined as a force over length, so this makes sense. And there is no distributed load anywhere else on the member. Therefore, everywhere else on the shear force diagram, the slope is zero. And you see the two horizontal lines. You might be wondering what happens here. Well, at this location, there is a concentrated load applied here. And that corresponds to this step change in the shear force diagram, with the magnitude equal to the vertical component of this applied force, 346 pounds. And also here we have another concentrated load applied at point B. And as you can see on the shear force diagram, at this location, there's another step change with a magnitude of 365 pounds that will return the curve back to zero. And another very important relationship is that if you look at the bending moment diagram, the slope function is the shear force function. Like these two straight lines, they are both decreasing with constant negative slopes corresponding to the shear force values here, negative 18 pounds and negative 365 pounds. And this part is mostly increasing with the slope corresponding to the positive values on the shear force diagram. And you cannot quite see it, but there is a maximum value in the bending moment diagram that corresponds to where shear force is zero. And lastly, here on the member, we have an external couple moment applied at point B. And on the bending moment diagram, you see this step change with the magnitude of 200 pound foot that will return the curve back to zero. As a summary for the graphical method, if there's a distributed load on the member, then the load intensity function W corresponds to the slope in the shear force diagram. 
the load intensity is pointing upwards, hence positive slope and increasing shear force on the diagram. You know that load intensity is not always a constant. Here is just a very simple example. But it's always true that Wx equals to dV dx. If anywhere on the member there is a concentrated load, then on the shear force diagram there is a corresponding step change. And then the shear force is the slope function or derivative function of the bending moment function, Vx equals to dM dx. The slope anywhere on the bending moment diagram corresponds to the shear force value at that location. And lastly, the external couple moment applied on the member corresponds to a step change in the bending moment diagram. Now let's look at another example quickly and use the graphical method to sketch the shear force and bending moment diagrams. So for this example, first step, we need to determine all the external loadings, including all the support reactions, and complete the free body diagram of this member. Now the free body diagram is complete. The second step is to determine how many sections we should have on the diagrams. We should have a different section whenever the loading situation changes. And step three, we start with the shear force diagram. I work from left to right. First, there is a 160 newtons concentrated load at point A. So on the diagram, there is a step change. And for the next 4 meters, there is no change in the force, or the load intensity is zero. Therefore, we have this horizontal line with slope of zero. And then there is a concentrated load of 100 newtons downwards, so we have a step change again for 100 newtons. Then for the next 3 meters, there is a downwards distributed load with intensity of 40 newtons per meter, which corresponds to a decreasing line with a slope of negative 40. For the last 3 meters, there is an upwards distributed load with intensity of 20 newtons per meter, which corresponds to an increasing line with slope of positive 20, returning the curve back to zero. And this completes the shear force diagram. Pay attention to the point where shear force is zero, because as you learned from calculus, this critical point corresponds to either a local maximum or local minimum bending moment, and you know we are always interested to know the maximum bending moment in the member. And step four, we can use the couple moment loading information on the member and the shear force diagram that we already made to complete the bending moment diagram. As you can see, there are two couple moments on the member which will correspond to step changes in the bending moment diagram. If you are not sure which direction is the step change, you just need to do a quick method of sections analysis and I will leave you to figure that out. So finally, we use the shear force diagram that has been sketched Look at the values of the shear forces because they correspond to the slopes of the bending moment diagram. Take into consideration of the step changes and complete the bending moment diagram. Review calculus if you need to. From these diagrams, we can tell the absolute maximum shear force in this member is 160 newton, and the absolute maximum bending moment in this member is 750 newton meters. These information will become very useful in structural design and material strength analysis.